So we're getting ready to talk about uh, where to start an art career or how to start an art career. With a big old cup of coffee. Yep. Yep. That's how I get started. Bobby's Tips for Artists because he loves you. Hola, you amazing artists. Today we are going to answer a question, not question that I got. Uh, I actually got this on Twitter where somebody was asking about advice that was on a different video. The video was about how to get started uh, with your art career and what was important in the video and I watched the video and they were asking me like what did I think and after watching the video I realized that a lot of the advice there is kind of the typical advice that artists are given when they start <laughs> and um, I mean I agree but I don't agree and I think the best way to explain it was to just do a video about how to get started in an art career. So here we go! Here we go! The question comes from Mark Jones. Hi! I've been watching some of your YouTube vids lately and I'm an aspiring artist myself. I don't know how to get started any kind of traction on getting my name out there and starting selling pieces. I was kind of looking for some advice on how to get going. I'll understand if this message gets ignored or looked over. You did not get ignored, Mark Jones. No, Mark, you did not. In order to get your stuff out there, in order to get some traction going, uh, there are two, three things that you need to do. A, create some artwork. B, put them out there on Instagram, any social media, put them out there on any websites that you might have or any other areas online that you see that people are sharing their work. Um, put them out there at local art festivals, put them out there at local markets, put them out there in local businesses, just go in and talk to them. Basically any opportunity that there is to put them out there. There is no easy answer to this, okay? There is just no easy answer to getting traction going for your career. The only thing I could tell you is that it takes time, but you have to get started and you have to start putting it out there uh, and face a lot of fears while you're doing it. Yeah, it can be utterly terrifying, but people definitely need to see your work and it helps if they can see your face and know your story. Yep. It does. To be honest with you, that is the best answer I could give you for putting your stuff out there. Really, I don't know what is going on in your local community. I don't know what kind of art events you got going on. You gotta, you gotta do it. You just gotta figure out which is the best way for you to start putting your stuff out there. That being said, a lot of the advice that you'll hear about starting a career, starting an art career, um, I don't necessarily agree with. So let's see. So the first piece of advice that you'll hear about starting an art career is to have a workspace. Have an area that is dedicated to you and your workspace. Now a lot of artists will suggest that you rent a studio space or that you rent some kind of space in order to be able to keep your art supplies and do your work. I um, am a big believer that if you own an apartment or you have a house or a room or a place where you sleep, then you can pretty much create an art space there. Create an art space in your living room like we did. You could have storage in the entire house. Basically, the way that I see it is why pay additional overhead if you could just create your art studio wherever it is that you are. Now, I do understand that sometimes you live in a place where maybe you are sharing the space and not too many people are keen about you doing your own art space in the living room so like I understand that if you have a garage if you have any other place where you could set up a studio for yourself whether it is a room in the basement or anything like that then I suggest that you do that now what is important is that that space gets respected that is your art space if you are running into issues with that that would be the only time that I would recommend getting a place that is not within your living location. Yes, yeah, so like if you have roommates trying to convert your workspace into a place to throw their dirty laundry, unacceptable. Yeah, if you can set some boundaries and some rules, and if that doesn't work, I would honestly suggest just get, a, get an apartment with roommates that do and just do that instead of living with a bunch of douchebags. Basically what we're saying is money is definitely a thing building an art career, so don't spend the monies where you don't have to. So the other advice that you'll hear is get yourself a body of work together. What they will say is that you should spend the first two to three years building a body of work 
and then start putting your stuff out there. I completely and utterly disagree with this. This does not make any sense to me whatsoever. You're gonna spend the first two to three years when you are putting your stuff out there, whether it's on social media or anywhere else, you're gonna spend those years in obscurity. Anyway, nobody's gonna really know who you are. It may take about a year or two in order to really start growing a following. So in my mind, why not create your body of work while you're putting your stuff out there, while you're growing your following, so that by the end of the two or three years, you already at least started a following when you are ready to put your body of work out there. Put your stuff out there as you go, as you're creating your body of work. Yeah, that way there are people who know about you when you're ready to show said body of work. Why wait? That doesn't make any sense to me at all. I'm I don't like, know. Oh. A lot of the things I learned early on was because I was putting my pieces out there and getting feedback about them. Yeah, how are you supposed to get feedback? How are you supposed to, you can't create a body of work in a bubble and expect to really understand what the market is when you're when you're getting out there. Like it doesn't work that way. The very first time I showed my work, I had like five pieces of jewelry. Yeah. And it was at a yard sale. I set up a snack tray. And the second time I showed my work, I had like eight or 10 pieces of jewelry. And I was utterly terrified to even say hello to anyone. Yeah. Yeah. When I started selling my art, I think I had like nothing. I had the, the table set up and I created some sketches and a few things here and there, but there were maybe about three sketches that I did. And then while I was there, um, I painted. Mm -hmm. and I created stuff and the first pieces that I created I did on poster board and found pieces of wood to paint on because I didn't have any canvas. Maybe it works for some it would not have worked for me. Yeah I mean and that's and that's the thing like honestly take this with a grain of salt because if you think that it is a good plan for you to build your body of work before you put yourself out there then by all means do that but uh, it just didn't make sense. I would have never done what I've done with my career had I waited. It just would have worked out. When it was time to go, it was go time. Yeah, it was go time. The advice that a lot of people give is to target your market, to find out who your buyer is. Now in this particular video, he was talking about, um, you know, if you create vineyard paintings that maybe you want to target wine, wineries and different things like that, like wine markets. If you do beach scenes, maybe like coastal areas and like touristy places to show your art, that totally makes sense to me. That absolutely and completely makes sense to me. If there is a niche that your artwork fits into, then you have a target market. That makes sense. So if you can create something that is niche -y like that, then you could easily find your target market. And I'm not putting that artwork down that's still valuable artwork. It's just, it's much easier to find a target market for it. Now, when he was talking, what he said was that his target market were uh, essentially affluent people with disposable income that had walls. And I was like, what? No explanation on where you find these people that have walls. Big sweeping generalizations, anyone? <laughs> sometimes it is easy to find a target market and sometimes it is not. For my artwork, for example, I don't really have a target market. It is stuff that I love and so like-minded people that have seen my art over the years have started following me and started collecting my art. They started collecting my work because of of me, of the work that I create. Yeah, and some of my collectors are people that buy lots of jewelry, and some of them are people who never bought a piece of jewelry in their lives. So I have to put my stuff somewhere where it gives an opportunity for all those types of people to find me. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I have a lot of collectors that didn't start collecting art until they found my work. There isn't really a niche target market for me. I could easily say, sure, anybody with blank walls, where do you find these people? <laughs> you know, like, where do you find people with blank walls? Yeah, and last I checked, there's no like conventions or social media group. If you have a group of this nature, hit us up. I mean, I have work that is hanging in some of the local real estate offices, some of the closing offices that wasn't done on purpose. Like, oh, these people have blank walls. There's my niche market. It's just the idea of putting my stuff out there in as front of as many people as possible 
so that the right people find it. It's not about doing mass marketing either. It's just about slowly and organically building a following. It does take time because I'm not fitting into a niche where I could really, really target that market. Once those people find out about you, um, they're very, very loyal. So you've got collectors for life. So number four was to find your target market. And what they discussed was, uh, you know, putting your stuff out on Instagram, putting it basically what I said earlier. It's like, just put your stuff out there. <laughs> if you create stuff that will fit into different conventions and different things like that, then definitely apply for those conventions. If you have a target market, then definitely use that to your advantage. If you don't, Put your stuff out there across the board. Whatever is within reason for you, wherever there are people that you think that you will enjoy, chances are that if it's something that you enjoy, they will enjoy your artwork as well. Yeah, then you have the opportunity to determine this really sucked or hey, that worked out pretty good. Yep, yep, exactly. You gotta try the things out. You never know. The other thing that he said was presentation, that you wanna make sure that your presentation is Professional. A professional presentation can make or break the art. You want to come off like a professional. So my shade cloth walls are shade cloth that are framed in wood that look pretty cool, but I wouldn't really say that they are professional grade. Nothing that I've had over the last few years is professional grade. If anything, everything that I have is homemade grade. I have some pretty good neck forms that we made ourselves and they're awesome. But before that, I was showing my jewelry on some manky old pleather neck forms that were falling apart in every possible way. That being said, don't be a slob, okay? <laughs> like seriously, don't go out there with a sweaty old dirty t-shirt and uh, just sit next to like artwork strewn about on the floor. Um, make it yours. I wouldn't concern myself too much with being professional because that 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 word is so convoluted that I you know like who know how do people view professional? I don't know. Yeah, that's going to mean different things to different yeah. people. Yeah. What I would concern myself with is making sure that the presentation is you. That it is uh, something that is unique to you and your style. The things that you like. Make it look the way that you want it to look. Something that uh, symbolizes who you are. So me, I'm very like thrown together rustic type art. So everything that I created to display and present my stuff is very much in that style. So everything has a very Rafi style to it because the stuff that I look at, I'm like, that's freaking cool. I love that. I love the way that looks all handmade and thrown together. Yeah. And I like a very rustic do it yourself kind of minimalist thing. So most of my stuff is that. Now, most importantly, because you're doing this, you are standing out against the crowd. So the crowd, if they're doing everything that everyone else is doing, you know, they've got the same walls that they bought at the place where artists buy walls for a lot of money and they've got the same canopies and they've got the same this and the same displays and the same everything. There is nothing that is saying, hey, this is me, this is who I am. There's nothing memorable about that. In a sea of sameness, a lot of times the original work that's up there gets lost. Customize what you can and present yourself <clears throat> and your work to the best of your ability working with what you have. Yeah. Exactly. Or what you can easily acquire. Yeah, and whatever you're comfortable with. Don't worry about it being professional. I don't know I don't know what that means. I don't know what it means to be professional. Just make sure that it's you, that it looks good to you, that you're really happy with it, that you're really proud of it, and um, most importantly, have fun with it. In the world of displays, professional is another word for expensive, just yeah. like G-Clay. When it comes down to it, listen, at the end of the day, if you want to get your art career going, first off, I'm assuming that you're already creating artwork. It, my advice would be create more artwork, keep creating artwork, keep putting your stuff out there as you are creating more artwork. See what kind of local events are going on where you could get your stuff out there, where you could get some feedback and really start talking to people and really, really facing your fears of putting yourself out there. If you find yourself making any excuses that like, well, I don't know if I wanna do this or I don't know if I wanna do that and you start playing it small, especially in the beginning of your art career, um, 
that's not gonna work in your favor. You gotta get your stuff out there. You gotta let people know that you exist, that you and your artwork exist. And that might take some time. So be prepared for the long haul. Pretty much the three rules are this. Start creating work, create a lot of work, keep practicing, keep playing around, keep experimenting, keep growing your collection. Put your work out there, put it out there in as many places as you possibly can within reason and persist through the bull crap. You're going to have to persist through the bull crap, whether the bull crap is coming from outside of you or the bull crap is coming from inside here, persist through the bull crap, keep going, you'll get there. Yeah, and usually the bull crap is coming from a mixture of out there and in here. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of bull crap. And that's it for this video today, you guys. And also, I am interested in hearing any additional advice that you might have for anyone out there that is thinking about starting an art career. Please stay positive in your advice and just leave those in the comment section below. And thank you so much for watching you guys. You guys are absolutely freaking amazing. I totally adore you. And if you like this and you wanna watch more like this, you just click right over here to subscribe. And that's it. Say goodbye, Klee. Good day. Adios.